All right, so welcome back to our second part of lecture five. In the previous part, lecture 5.1, we learned about the logistic regression single neuron model and learned how to calculate its derivatives, found that the gradient resulting from calculating the derivative was the same as the perceptron update, like discrete gradient and the linear regression gradient. So what that means is that the single neuron class that we have written, um, where is it, right, uh, maybe here, this class can be used for all three types of supervised machine learning, perceptron classification, linear regression, and logistic regression classification, right? And we've had to define this class each time we've talked about these three subjects, right? And realistically, I could copy this code from my uh, logistic regression example notebook. I could copy that code for that class, paste it into the linear regression notebook, and it's still gonna do the same thing. It's still gonna learn, right? And just to kind of illustrate that, at the bottom of this lecture 5.1 notebook, so this is the logistic regression training. Here, I'm gonna show you that it that actually is the case, that this class that we've written can also do the perceptron update rule, right? So in order to make a perceptron single neuron, I need two things. I need to define the activation and a cost function. Once I have those, I can just pass those into that single neuron class, right? That's all the difference, that's the only difference between all three of these models is those two things. So once I do that, I get my pedal length, sepal length values. I don't know why I did that again, I've already got them. Um, I make a, the targets, I have to change the, the labels now to be um, negative one and positive one for the perceptron. Those are the labels that you have for that model. So there are differences in, in the labels, but the, the neuron model, the only dif differences are those two functions. Okay, so then I can just call my train method, plot the decision boundary and see what happens. I'm not gonna do this 20,000 times. I'll just do it like a thousand times or 5,000 times. Okay, so let's see if this class that we've written is generalizable to, yeah, it is. It tried to find a linear separator with, um, I don't know why it says logistic regression. I need to go back up into the class definition and change that. But this is the perceptron now. See the labels, negative one or one? So that was the perceptron. This was logistic regression, labels zero, one. And then we can look at the, the cost function, like that. Nice, right? Let's see if we can make this work for linear regression, right? So not classification anymore. So I just mean squared error, I've already defined. I just need the linear activation function. And that just returns Z. So I'll call this node four. And single neuron, instead of the sine function, give it linear. And now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna regress. Maybe I'll use pedal length. Yeah. So pedal length. Um, and I'm gonna choose one species, maybe Satosa. Zero through. So those are cetosis there. And then I'm going to have to rename this to four. I'm just getting the data set up for a regret, a linear regression. So then I'm not, the, the targets now are not these, it's not classification anymore, it's a number. So I have to pick one of the measurements, like um, pedal width, maybe. I don't know. 
So, so for the Satosa species, petal with dot values. Oh, I almost forgot. I need to do the reshape because it's a single measurement. That. So then I can just let's see if, the, if it's this simple. There is no plot decision boundary anymore. This is node four right here. Node four dot plot cost function. Okay. Yep, it did something really fast. So what we can do now, if we want to see how it looks, I can do something like, you just change up some stuff here, um, plt that figure big size equals to be 10 by eight, plt that scatter x4, y4, Table equals Satosa flowers. I'm just doing this real, real quick. So then I need a domain. NP dot lens space dot min x4 to NP dot max of x4, maybe like 100 points in there. And then plt dot plot um, x4, oh no, sorry, domain, comma, node four dot predict on that domain, but I have to reshape it. Let's see. Shapes one comma 100, not aligned. That is because I'm doing something dumb here. Well, let's quickly troubleshoot NP, no, sorry. Um, domain dot shape. Hundred dot domain dot reshape. This is probably just something really silly. There. In fact, let me pause the recording real fast. Okay, figured out the problem. It was this here. Before I had a one comma negative one that reshaped it improperly. That was not a column vector representation. So that was the problem. So if you reshape it that way, and I changed my x to be sepal length, y to be sepal width. Single neurons define the same, just now with the linear activation function. And we can train on that X and that Y. And then we can scatter the points, get a domain, and then predict on that domain. Again, reshape, negative one first, one next. And then, so it's training like that. So the only thing that was wrong in the previous code was the reshape um, entries. Okay. All right. So what it, what this is telling me though, right, is that this is a pretty useful class that I have, right? And I would might want to use this over and over again. So how can we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to make a few Python 
modules. Python modules are scripts, Python scripts, so the .py extension, they contain Python code inside of them. Now to illustrate how to do this, I'm not gonna open this in my current um, window. I'm gonna make a, a new folder to open up. So I'm inside VS Code, new window, and then I'm gonna say open, and just somewhere on my computer, I'm gonna like, um, I'll call it maybe um, my, maybe single neuron create. And then I'm gonna open that up. It should be an empty directory. There's nothing over here, okay? And I'm just gonna start copying and pasting. So um, I'm gonna click right here, new file. I'll call this a single neuron.py. The .py extension tells my computer that it's a Python script. There it is. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm going to find my single neuron class right up here. Okay. I'm gonna copy that. Oh, the little arrow right there hides it if you want. Let me make sure I got it all. So just gonna copy all of this business here. Copy that, come back over here and inside the single neuron script, paste. Okay. Now notice there's a little dot right here indicating I haven't saved anything yet. So before I do that, you'll probably see a bunch of errors and that's because inside this script, you don't have access to the packages yet. So at the top of the, the uh, script, you need to do um, all the things. So import matplotlib.py plot as plt, import numpy as np, and then import, uh, what else do we have? We don't, we're not using pandas in this script, right? In that class, there's no pandas functionality, um, but we are plotting stuff. And then I'll just say uh, sns.set theme like that, the top. And then I think with the decision regions, I need to also import that as well, okay? So come back over here. I know it's at the top. There it is, copy it over here and then paste it. Now, notice these, there's still some squiggly lines. This is not gonna, if I try to run this script, it's not gonna, there's no output or anything that's gonna do. So let's just click this little play button and see what happens. Oh, no module named matplotlib. That doesn't make sense. You see this error right here? It's because VS Code does not currently, it's not pointing at the bin in a Python on my computer, a version of Python on my computer. It's not pointing to that bin that would contain that package. And I can change it in VS Code by going over here and then selecting a different bin. So for example, the Python and Anaconda should have it. So if I click that now, I see down here, it says base conda. All the squiggly lines go away, but these are not being highlighted. So let's just try to run this script again. I, I just click the play button. All right, no problems running. I didn't see any errors when I ran it. I want to clear my terminal. I can just type that. If I'm on a Unix-based system, just type clear, press enter. Okay, so this script contains my class, right? So, okay. Maybe um, I want to also save my functions that I've written, right? So I'm going to make a new script and I'm going to say that this is called um, functions.py. 
And I'm going to go back over here to my previous notebook. And I'm going to grab the sigmoid function. I just copied that. I literally am just copy pasting everything. Grab the sigmoid. There it is. Come back over here. There's that class again. Cross entry loss. I'm probably going to need that. And then down below. These two guys here, sign and mean squared error, and then linear. All right, so I'm going to put all these in. I like to group my, my losses together. Then, so notice the squiggly lines. That means that currently NumPy is not with us, so import numpy as np. Now the squiggly lines go away. I can save that script, and if I try to run it, it it should be fine. Okay, so far so good. We're just storing all of these functions in scripts, and these are called modules. These are Python modules. Okay, so now I'm going to make a, a new Python script called main. That py. Okay. And I'm going to do the following. Well, actually, before doing that, I'm going to do this. So here, I'm going to add to my single neuron script something called the all method. This is a list that contains the string names of the things you want to export from that file. So there's only one thing in here, it's called the single neuron. Be sure to hit save, command S or control S. Notice the little dot goes away, it's saved, good. And then here there's a bunch of them. So this might take me a second. All equals to sigmoid, tab over, linear, sign, and SC. That's mean squared error and cross entropy loss. All right, notice the dot. I hit command S, saved. Okay. So now inside of my main function, I can do something like this. Um, say from functions import if i do star this is a lazy import it's going to import everything that has this name right but because we want to be descriptive with our code we can say something like this from functions and import um let's just say uh sigmoid and i can say also last century loss Right. So notice there's no errors. It's because in my current working directory, there is a module called functions. And inside of there, there are these functions. Yeah, if you put a star, it'll just import everything, but the reader won't know what is in there. This is typically why the star is avoided. These lazy imports are, are avoided because it's not clear what you've imported. And you're literally, if there's not an all thing there, if like I'm I'm just doing this ahead of time because I don't want you to ever not do this. If there's not an all double a dunder all, it will literally import everything in that script. Everything, constants, function, everything that's in the script, it will import. This is a way of making sure that you're not bloating the program. So that's why I avoid the star. And it's this is more descriptive, right? So that's getting that. Now, another way to access a module is as follows. Um, I can do this. Um, import single neuron. 
what if I've been calling, I've been using like node for my single neurons, right? So um, import single neuron as node. Okay. So then I can do, I can make a node is equal to node dot. I'll call it like node one is equal to node dot. What's inside of that single neuron? That. So then single neuron, sigmoid, loss entry loss, like that. And if I save that and run it, no problems. It's it's good. So, okay, that's how we interact with modules, right? So, um, and this is giving it an alias, right? If I didn't give it that alias, I would have to do this. Right? Or I could do I could just get that one specific thing. Right. Um, and then we can train just like normal. We can write the code that we want and then run the script and it's going to train. Right. But now it's much more modular. Right? There's these pieces. We know these functions work. We know this is a okay class. Actually, I want to change something real fast. This. Um, I don't want it to be specific to logistic progression. I want it to be just near on this. Okay. So, okay, this is how we would store our code, right? And we can, if we're in a Jupyter notebook, this will also work, right? As long as you have direct access to those modules in your current working directory. Okay. Now notice something that's going on here. In these modules, there's an all, a dunder method with all, right? We've only seen dunder methods when? When we've made classes, right? In early in the semester, I tried to emphasize that everything in Python is an object and objects have attributes and methods. Modules are in Python, they are, you can think of them as objects. So what's happening here when we are in main, we're importing, like this is, a, this is an object. One of its methods is single neuron, right? And how do we access methods? with the dot notation, object, dot, whatever method you want to use. You can also have constants in these, in these modules. So this would be like the attri like attributes, okay? Now with that being said, this is a little clunky for a package. It, it, I don't really see what's going on here. Okay? With that, and a way that we can make, that we can clean this up a little bit would be to add a folder and I'll call this um, say, um, uh, I'll call this models. I don't know why it highlighted red there, but it's just a directory. And then inside of that directory, I'm gonna move my, my function script. I don't know what that warning was. Okay. So now, how was this working earlier? What was it? Oh, I don't know. Well, I guess, oh, it, it did it for me. That's wild. That's what that, 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 that error was. I moved it into that directory and it changed the location for me. 
I was so confused as to why it was working before. Like I thought it, I didn't notice that. That's, that's pretty crazy. So now look at how I'm accessing these functions. I go into the models directory, right? And now models is gonna be a package because it contains multiple, it's a directory containing modules. So this is a Python package, okay? So when you are creating a package like this, it's best practices to make a double underscore in it dot py script. Okay. And this in it script is going to export what you want from that package. Okay. So from like models dot functions import star. Now I use the lazy method in my my dunder script, my my in my init scripts. Okay. Because if they want it, the reader wants to know what is being exported from that module, I mean from that package, they can go to the respective module and see the all um, description. And then so from models dot functions import star. All right, I'm going to save that. Go back to my main. So I wonder what happens if I do this. So from models imports sigmoid comma um, Where's my in it? Oh, I forgot to put, oh, my main needs to come up over here. There is a, it's hard to tell that there's a little indention right there. I wanted a single neuron in there. Okay, so models that functions and for that, and then there, save it like that. So now those are contained in there and main is outside of it. So coming over to main from models, import that and then you're on. I can get rid of this alias now. Notice that there's no errors. Let me just run it to make sure. Yeah, everything is good. So that's, that is now an example of a package. Init file, this is like, when you're calling the when you call the package, it's almost like making an, an instance of it, just like a class. And what do you want to be initialized with that package? Just like when you initialize a class. Well, I want it to be all of the functions inside of this module and all the functions inside of this module. Okay. If you wanted to be very descriptive, you could do this. You could do from models dot functions import uh, sigmoid. I've seen this done as well. You can just do it one at a time to be very descriptive if you want to be. There's two different ways to do it. Uh, you, don't, you also want to get your cost functions, right? And you can like take up a lot of a lot of time, but sometimes it's worth it to do it. So two different ways to access the functions from those two different modules. Okay. And if I notice that they're all inside of models. So is that we access them? Okay. Another way would be like, if we wanted to be very explicit, um, we could say, um, import models dot functions as F-U-N-C, like func, okay? And then we do func dot sigmoid, Funk that cross entry loss, and then import models dot 
single neuron as node, node dot that. Now, now that you understand, hopefully, what's going on here, how you're, you're getting these functions from the modules, and you think of as packages as Python objects, methods, and the modules are also Python object with methods and attributes. This will make it a lot easier to understand how the packages work that we've been importing. Like if you think about it, did anyone really understand like matplotlib.pyplot as POT? Think about it. It's exactly what we just did. It's the matplotlib package and there's a pyplot module, right? And in that module, there's methods, there's functions in there. So that's why we get them out and we use them all the time, right? Um, same thing with numpy. When we do numpy.random or mp.random, numpy package, the random module dot rand, which is a method inside of that module. This is the way that these things work. Um, and it helps understand what's going on when you're trying to learn a new package. For example, in a short amount of time, we're going to make it to the SK learn package. And it's going to help a lot to understand how these, these, these modules link together. So for example, here's the perceptron that's built in. Somewhere down here, there's like, it has, there's like, where is it? I'm, these are all, these are all different types of classification. Let me just click on that. sklearn.linearmodel.perceptron. So they call their, like one of their modules, the linear model. And inside of that, there is a Python. I mean, there is a perceptron class, probably. That's what it is. And these are the parameters of it. And you can ask, access it by doing this. SK learn package, linear model module, perceptron class. And you see perceptron, you can set parameters and then you can say, it, which is equivalent to our train method, right? And then you can look at scores and you can even do predict. There's a predict method. It's like we have a predict method, okay? And immediately you should understand what this is as well, sklearn.datasets. Oh, I need to, if I wanna learn more about load digits, I need to go and find the datasets documentation. Somewhere in there, there's, a method load digits, right? Back if I just like look around, base, whatever. There's all kinds of 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 modules in here for specific tasks. Okay. Now we didn't train anything in our our VS Code script, um, but we could have, and I hope that you see that, right? I made an instance and if I had data that I wanted to train it on, I'd feed it and it would do exactly as before. Just now it's nice and tucked away. And I can't mess with it anymore. I know it works. If I want to, I can go and change it, but I, it works. I don't wanna keep on copying, pasting it. It, it. This is how you should do it in a professional way. So I encourage you to try to do this with your Jupyter notebooks. If you put these, if you make this folder and you stick it in the directory with whatever notebook you're working with, you can call those functions just like this. But now it's it's clean, right? It's not as clean as it could be because I really should put like a, like some doc strings here to kind of describe it, All right? So I think that will be it for part two of our fifth lecture. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now.